Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Well, today we're at a V4 Tesla supercharger. It looks like around 12 stalls at this site. And this uh, is relatively new. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this uh, Rivian in and we're gonna see see what uh, what type of power delivery we have. Right now I'm at 45% uh, state of charge. I'm at a pretty high state of charge right now, so I don't expect too good of speeds out of this, but uh, we're gonna just go ahead and check it out and we'll take a look at the cabinets. It has a pricing on it. It's pretty expensive here. And I think it's like 50 cents per kilowatt hour. So I'm not going to charge for too long because I don't like wasting money because I actually don't need to charge, but I just want to come here just for, uh, so you all can uh, get a firsthand view of these, ac these actual V4 cabinets or V4 chargers, actually. I'm just going to go to Tesla's website and I know I looked at the pricing the other day. The price, this is the pricing for non-Teslas. And so right here, uh, this is in Shiloh, Illinois. And it says 12 superchargers up to 325 kilowatts max. And it gets the pricing for Tesla members, which is pretty darn good, 21 cents between, you know, 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 44 cents between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. and 39 cents uh, between 7 and 11 p.m. And again, 21 cents between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. And for non-Teslas, you can pay a lot more so from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. is 29 cents. And from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. is 62 cents. That's pretty darn high. That's, uh, that's EV go high. <laughs> and then, uh, 55 cents to 55 cents from 11, from 7 to 11 p.m. And then 29 cents per kilowatt hour from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. And so that's the pricing for this. So we'll go ahead and char uh, plug this in. Of course, if you have the Tesla app and, you know, if you set it up, and pay the, the monthly fee of the, you can get the lower rate, but I'm not gonna do that because I never come to Tesla Superchargers. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, plug this thing in and see how it works. And of course my Rivian has the the uh, the NACS port on it. And this is my adapter, I just keep it plugged in here. But uh, because like I always, 90% of my charging is on, probably like 99% is done at home, but that's the NACS port on the Rivian. This is the, uh, 2026 generation two quad motor. And you see that this doesn't even have the option for the magic dot. It's just the, the regular Tesla supercharger. And so obviously you need an adapter to go with this one. But uh, you see the, the cords are a lot longer and you can pretty much plug this in on any, any, either side of your vehicle and just go ahead and plug it in. And it's to be plug and charge. Let's see if I get the green light. It's kind of hard to tell with this vehicle whether I get the green light or not. I like the old one with the big, big ring around it where you can tell. It looks like it might be green. Let's see if we get in the vehicle and see. Oh, it says unplug and try again. Yeah. Okay. So I guess it's not charging. And I got the, uh, the red uh, light right there. Yeah, let's try this again. And this, this doesn't seem to be working right. It doesn't seem to be locked in. Like I can, oh, okay, it's now it's locked in. Now it's charging. So I'm not sure what was going on with that, but it seemed really loose. And let's just go to the graph here. And so I'm getting 116 kilowatts, 129, 141. Again, I'm at 45% state of charge, so I don't expect it to go that high. So it's pretty much sitting at 145 kilowatts, which is uh, pretty good, I guess. And I already said it's estimated a dollar to put in 1.9 kilowatt hours. You know, now it's at two kilowatt hours, so it's a dollar and 25 cents. And that's pretty expensive. You know, check these cabinets out and see, uh, see what kind of power delivery they have with these cabinets, if I can see anyway. And that's cabinet two, cabinet three, cabinet one. Let's just go back to the uh, 
the vehicle and see the charging here. And of course, around here you have Deerberg's, uh, that's a grocery store. Then you have the Applebee's right there. There's a Chipotle over there and the Noodles Company. And we just come from a 54, uh, 54th Street Bar and Grill. So there's a lot of eateries around here. So if you wanted to get something to eat, but I'm looking around, at least there's some trash cans, but nowhere to wash the windows. And so you're on your own with that. So I guess you can use some spit or something like that. I don't know, <laughs> use the windshield wipers, but right here is nowhere to uh, wash the windows. And so uh, that's a critique I have about a lot of these, these uh, charging stations here is that nowhere to wash the windows. I right, just to check in on the charging session. Man, that's expensive quick. So right now it's putting in 149 kilowatts and it's at 56% state of charge. So that's not bad. And it's been holding uh, pretty steady. You can see it's been a, oops, a pretty flat uh, charging curve so far. And so, so far it's putting in uh, 17 kilowatt hours. And the price right now is $10.42, which is pretty darn expensive. So if I just do some quick math, that's not that many miles. So that may be like in the car, maybe two gallons of gas worth. And yeah, so that, that'd be pretty expensive. That's almost probably comparable to around maybe four fifty a gallon, if not higher. But one of the things I did notice is that this Rivian charges pretty quickly. A lot faster than my last Rivian. And again, uh, we're at 58% state of charge and still holding at uh, 149 kilowatts. And here there are three cabinets and I guess they have uh, four pulse per cabinet in this one because uh, as you can see right here, this goes from from two from two A to to two D, and I'm at I'm at three A, and then you have three A, B, C, and D. So and this uh, total of twelve here. So uh, looks like four cab four pulse per cabinet. So I'm not sure if this thing was full, how much your power would be limited here. And that's uh, one thing to keep in mind. I know uh, not too long ago, they, this down the way, maybe maybe five or six miles, I may drive down there. They did open up a uh, another EV go station. And I believe that's a Nevi funded site, if I'm not mistaken. But I may drive down there and check it out. But right now my vehicle is saying I can't go over 50 miles an hour and have to get on the highway to get over there. So maybe I won't. <laughs> so maybe I won't head over there. <laughs> not until I get my vehicle fixed. And hopefully I can get that done. So I'm still waiting for Rivian to call me back. They haven't yet, so we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm just gonna take a look back in here. And I never even preconditioned before I came here. And so that that uh, can be part of it also. But uh, as you can see now, I'm at 158 kilowatts. So it actually increased. Well, it just dropped, okay, it's between 150, now it just dropped down to 150 again. But you see that charging curve is pretty flat. And right now I put in 25.8 kilowatt hours, or basically 26 kilowatt hours. Right now it's uh, 16 bucks. And this says ends in 18 minutes, but I'm not gonna stick around here that long. But yeah, so this is uh, looking pretty good. This is uh, right off the highway also. And so this is less than, in fact, the uh, the entrance on the highway is right over there, it's maybe less than a half mile away, maybe a quarter mile away. So uh, this is, as far as location, this is a pretty good one. And then just down the road, maybe five miles is another one. And they're putting in another one, uh, a location close to our house. It, so these things are going in all over the place and that's awesome. So, and this, I, I see it as a positive that this that a lot of pretenders and fakers these fake ev makers and i'm not going to name who they are you can go back and watch my old videos from a few years ago where everything i said came to pass <laughs> as far as who i believe were the fake ev makers and and how they were just holding out for a new administration to pull back all of these uh these uh carbon emission rules and get rid of EV tax credits and things like that. And it all came true. And I said they were gonna pull back on their EV ma ma manufacturing, that's exactly what they did. So no surprise to me at all, because I said it a few years ago, when no one else is saying it. And in fact, I'll link that video just in case uh, anyone wants to to, uh, to see whether or not my predictions were correct. But yeah, so this is uh, going pretty well. The only critique I have about this this uh, charging station is you have to pull out into this relatively busy area right here. 
So uh, that's the only critique I have with this, but uh, let's see. But besides that, this is going pretty darn good. And I finally just dropped down. It, it just finally dipped. I'm at 35 kilowatts. And I'm, right now I'm at 66% state of charge, but I put in 31 uh, kilowatt hours. And so let me just go back to level. You see right here, 66. It's projected for 85. I'm just going, eh, I'm not going that deep. Uh, I'll just set it for 69 and we'll see what happens. We'll see if it cuts off. I doubt if it will, but we'll see. I do have the AC running. And right now you see the temperature says 92 degrees and I'm not going to sit here in the heat. Let's see what I have my AC set at. The sun set on pretty low. So, but if you, uh, you know, if you want to charge your car quickly, faster, just turn your AC off. And if you want to go grab something to eat, that'd be cool or use the bathroom. Because uh, right now I'm looking to the, the cyber truck right here to my, to my right and there's a cyber truck to my left. There's no one in those vehicles. I guess they plugged in and uh, probably want to go get something to eat or use the bathroom. But right now I'm at 68%. Let's just go back to the, the level. Again, it, it dropped down, but this has been a pretty, a pretty flat charging curve. You see, and then this is a little dip right here. And again, flat again. And right now I'm down to 129 kilowatts. And I'm at 69% state of charge. It'd be nice if this thing cut off automatically, but it doesn't. But I'm ready to hit the uh, stop charging thing and uh, end this charging session. And so that was 14 minutes to put in 35 kilowatt hours. And I say that's pretty darn good. So I just ended that charging session and right now I have 2,240 miles of range. And go ahead and unplug. <sighs> Go ahead and unplug. Oh, this thing is pretty warm. Oh, not this part is not warm. The hand, this this cord is not warm at all, but this part is pretty warm right here. Go ahead and uh, put this back up. And there we go. Now, as far as charging ports, you know, there was a big deal about NACS and versus CCS. I don't think it makes a difference. You know, and they, they were talking about the cables are easier to move. Yes, they were because the CCS cables are heavier, but these version four cables are also heavy too. So when it gets cold outside, it's going to be harder to maneuver them because they're thicker because they're pushing more power through them. So uh, I never, I, I don't see that as a, that was not a selling point at all to me because I charge at home 99% of the time anyway. And I didn't see what the big, I never did see what the big deal was. I thought it was all misdirection. I thought there was a bigger uh, reason that playing. I did some videos on that too. I always thought that when they decided to make CCS the standard, yeah, I think that really kind of ticked off uh, Elon Musk because he already had some beef with the administration. That was the Biden administration at the time. And I think that had a lot to do with one of the reasons why they did the switch over. I, I, I talked about that in the past video, but yeah, but they got this vehicle charged up and uh, yeah, so we're gonna head on out. And also, if you haven't already, uh, please like and subscribe. Ho hope you got some value out of this. This is great to see some of these these new charging stations going in. You know, even at the same time that they got rid of the EV tax credits, which weren't really good for much anyway, because very few vehicles qualify for that tax credit in the first place. But that's all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me once again. And I can't wait to see you on the next video.